Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay Gray and I am a star diamond coach on Christina's team. I have been in this business for a little over two and a half years and in that time it has really transformed me in many different ways. Um, the biggest and the first way I would say that it affected my life, it was both physically and mentally. I've always been that person that compared myself to others. Um, I was always looking for the next best thing. Physically I didn't know how to take care of my myself, um, which led to a lot of self-punishing as far as starving myself so I could eat a big dinner and then I ate too much of dinner and then I'm, you know, punishing myself because I ate too much and I feel all these feelings of guilt and it was just something that I carried around these emotions all the time. I'd look at other people, I'd constantly compare myself and I couldn't figure out why I was holding on to that last five to eight pounds. Through this business, I have been able to lose that, to keep it off. I lost 40 pounds after um, my pregnancy as well. I started this at 25 weeks pregnant, so it really helped me and came into my life at the perfect time where I was able to learn how to properly give myself nutrition, how to take care of myself, how to get my body to where I needed to be, what was right for me as far as workouts, what was right for me as far as nutrition, and it set me up for helping my family um, with the nutrition as well. So mentally, I don't compare myself to others anymore. This business has built me up a lot through personal development, through the team that I'm surrounded by, through the people that I'm in contact with. I've never been part of something that's more positive and uplifting. Um, I'm definitely more patient. I've learned how to live in the moment. It really has made me happier than I ever thought that I really could be. And I never thought I'd be so confident in who I am. Financially is the biggest part that this business has affected my family. In May of 2013 is when I started coaching at 25 weeks pregnant. I went back to work November of 2013 full time and in June of 2014, I was able to go part time due to my income I had made with Beachbody. I had hit diamond in March and in June I was able to go um, part time. The next year, June of 2015, I was able to reduce my hours again. I realize now I could have retired at this point, but I didn't because we fear, fear comes in our minds and gets in our way, and we get in our way when change is going to happen. And that's what happened. I just wasn't certain it was the right move, even though now I see that it was. Um, I reduced my hours again, that month instead. But in September of 2015, I walked away from my full-time job. I became a stay-at-home mom, a work-from-home mom, um, the owner and designer of my life. And financially, we're just at a place that I never thought we would be. We um, have vacations planned more often and to crazier spots that I ever thought that we would be able to have. We have that cushion where if something were to happen to an appliance or to a vehicle, we have a repair we need to do. It, I'm not scared of that and I'm prepared and I have that cushion that doesn't make me feel sick to my stomach and scared as it to, if I can provide for my family. Um, we are happier because we have this financial freedom, so to speak. We're working closer to that every single day. Um, this year, I just hit that I have made at, in a whole $100,000 with Beachbody just this week, actually. Um, and this year, it should clear above that just for the year of 2016. So this business is lucrative. This business is real, but you have to go in it with all of your heart. And the biggest thing that you have to do is decide. So I want you to take out your pen and paper, and I want you to write down in front of you that today, on this date, you decide to be successful. Success is the only option. There's no such thing as failure for you. There's no, that's not an option. So it doesn't matter how long you work at this business or how long it might take you to get there. You will get there one day and that is enough. You are enough. Just make the decision. Write that down, read it every day, envision it every day, and you will get there. Thanks for listening.
watching yourself on a video like that, like I didn't realize how emotional I was going to be watching that and realizing that two years ago when I was at this coach camp sitting where you are, I was watching those videos of other people. And I was inspired and I wanted to be there and I wondered how I would get there and when I would. And it's just like up until this moment, I mean last night, tonight we've all been like, ooh, are we nervous? We don't know, what do we feel? Um, and watching that, I just felt really grateful. Like all my nerves went away and um, this event is what changed everything two years ago. So I really want you guys to make sure that you're just taking all of the little nuggets that you can because it doesn't need to be my entire presentation that you know, gives you a ton of aha moments. It just needs to be that one thing that works for you because this business is different for Allison, it's different for me, it's different for Amanda, it's different for Jill. It's different for all of us. We all just share what we do, what works for us, and then you can take that and make it what it is for you. So in this presentation, I'm sharing a lot of things that I feel like a lot of people have touched on already today. I don't want to overwhelm you, but I do have to stay on a schedule, so I will not be reading all of the things that you will see on the slides. I want to ask you to take pictures if you need them, but don't try to write them down because then you'll miss what I'm saying. And that's more important at this point because all of these slides, everything that you see, all the scripts and examples I show you, you're going to have access to them at the end of this in our um, Coach Camp 2016 event page. So with that being said, um, I get to talk to you today about something that I think is the secret sauce for my business. So if you talk to anybody, everyone has something that they think is the secret sauce. And basically what the secret sauce is, is it's that thing that you struggled with for so long, that thing that was you in front of yourself, you in your own way, and when you finally figured it out, that is what made the business move. So for me, this is my secret sauce. Time management is my secret sauce. It might not be for you, so you may walk away from here with already having this figured out, and you know, you might have a secret sauce aha moment with Allison or a different presenter instead. But this for me, I'm, I'm really passionate about and um, it changed everything for me. So maximizing your time to allow success. When you look at this slide, the first thing that a lot of people will see is the maximizing and the time, right? Oh yes, I want to learn how to max my time and maximize my time in everything I do, right? I, in, all areas of your life. To me, when I look at this slide, two years ago, that's what would have stood out to me. Today, it's allow. Because the only thing that's going to make you successful in this business or is going to make you fail is what you allow yourself to do. You're gonna allow yourself to succeed or you're gonna allow yourself to fail. So as you're listening to all of these presentations, I just want you to keep that in mind. So the very first thing I'm going to start with is your why. Now I know you've heard of this before. Um, you've heard of it when you signed up. You have to have a why. You have to be connected to it. This goes with maximizing your time because you don't always want to do what you have to do in those time slots. But what makes you do it is being connected to your why. So your why is going to be the fuel that makes you send out the five messages that you really don't want to send out. You really don't care to that day. You have to dig deep and find why, right? So this I made, and I would look at it every single day when I woke up. I would look at what I wanted. I wanted lunch dates with my son. I wanted family time. I wanted to always be there. I wanted all of those things. And if I looked at those in the morning, and I focused on those throughout my day, then I would send out those messages because my why was bigger than any excuse I had. It was bigger than any scary post of what people were going to think about me. It was bigger than any invite or objection. It was bigger than that because invites are not any easier for Christina or myself or any of us than it is for you. We still get scared. Sometimes we hit send and we run, right? And we do that too. But it's just about realizing that you have to have something that's bigger than that. Something that you hold on to, if anyone hasn't noticed yet. I do have my son's little tiger with me because he's my why, and that's why I'm standing up here right now. Because not everything is going to make you comfortable, but you have to find your why, and you have to do it. So this is, this is intentional. I had to have him with me. But, um, so that is one thing that you need to connect with before you can start maximizing your time. 
you need to also be intentional with your time. Now, I, want, I mean intentional in everything. I know that there's a huge joke with parents and people all the time we're constantly multitasking, right? You're doing one thing while you're doing another, while you know, I'm doing dishes, I'm listening to a webinar, and I'm trying to talk to my son. You can't do that because when you do that, you don't feel present in your kids' lives. You don't feel connected with your husband or your wife because all at the end of the day you get done and you're like, what did I do today? All I did was spin. So you need to be intentional. You need to be intentional when you're doing all of these things with your kids, with your family, when you're cleaning your house. Put on music and jam. Forget about the you know webinar you need to listen to. You can do that when you can focus. Have some time to just celebrate you too because then you're gonna be better when you come back and start that webinar. So being intentional, these pictures just kind of speak to me because that top one was a day I was very intentional. I was on it with my time that day and I spent a lot of time with Owen and I was all focused on him and the house was awesome. <laughs> and then that bottom picture, not so much, right? I was joking with my husband and I actually said about these pictures, I'm like, I look at this and I'm like, this is your brain and this is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Any questions? Like you need to be focused and when you're focused, everything in life is going to be more organized. So now we'll go ahead and get into your power hour or your power to-do list, um, maximizing your time to allow your own success. So these tips that I'm about to give you are for the full-time working coach. So you're working full-time or part-time outside of the house and you're also trying to build a business. Now I did separate them this way, but it doesn't mean that these tips will not work for someone who works full-time at home right now. Because if, when I get to the end of this presentation, you'll realize that a lot of them overlap. So pay attention to all of them. If you are working full time, then you might be experiencing things like having a hard time finding time, right? Where do I find the time to possibly fit this in? How can I do that? I do too much already. You don't wanna take away from your family. You feel like you're in survival mode. That was huge for me. I would get to the end of the day and my husband would be like, how was your day today? And I'm like, I survived, <laughs> I win. Um, you feel like you can't focus and you feel guilty. Guilt is the one that takes over because if you're working your business and your family is doing this, you feel guilty. Or if you're doing this, but now you're not answering your coaches or your um, prospects, you're feeling guilty. So this is what you may be experiencing. The very first thing you need to do to maximize your time is get your brain on paper. And this is your brain without anything Beachbody related. Get Beachbody out of your head, sit down, write out whatever makes sense for you. A week, two weeks, three weeks, or a month. Get your brain on paper and put everything in there. Put your workouts in there, put your, your schedule, your kids' schedule, any events, birthdays, anything you have. You need to put everything in there that's there. Because then what you do is you find those pockets of time around that to fit in the business. You may, maybe you wake up 15 minutes earlier, maybe you go to bed 20 minutes later, whatever it is, that's where you find those pockets of time and then that's where you don't feel guilty, which then you don't start spinning your wheels and it's just a cycle. So finding your pockets of time is the very first thing you're going to do. These are example schedules with my coaches. I'll have them send me their schedules um, if they are struggling with time. And I will help them find the pockets of time and suggest what I would do if I were in their shoes. Because I did work this business while I was working full time as a hairstylist, opposite hours of my husband outside of the home with a newborn. And then I worked this business part time again. So with this, these are just two examples. And what I want you to notice here is that in these time slots, it's not just saying I'm working the business. 7 to 7.15, working the business. You know, 5 p.m., working the business. 9 p.m., working the business. You can't do that. Because if you do that, then you're gonna do what we all think is work, and it's not. You're gonna get on Facebook, you're gonna check your notifications, you're gonna check your messages, you're gonna scroll. It's gonna do anything for you, okay? So in those packets of time, it's now your responsibility to put in there exactly what you're doing in those time slots. So you're going to put that you're doing five outgoing messages. And while you're doing those five outgoing messages, if one of them responds, you're not answering them. You're not even opening it. You're not even looking at it because you're laser focused on that one thing that you're doing at that moment. 
So how do you know what to put in those time slots, right? Now you've carved out your time. You know you need to put things in there, but what are you gonna put in there? This is the business activity tracker. It shouldn't be a stranger to any of you, but I will say that it's probably the number one thing not used in the beginning of the business for a lot of people. I didn't use it for a year. And mainly for me, it was because I couldn't figure out a system. So you can print these off. The top left one is the Dream Extreme one that we use for a lot of our groups. The bottom right one is actually one I got from a different coach on a different team, and it's called the Power of Threes, and that's the one I used when I was starting the business and working full time. Because it was easy for me to remember, I just needed to do three of each, three outgoing, three invites, three new ads, and it was easier than, okay, two invites, five messages, just made more sense to me. The other reason why I didn't use this in the beginning of my business was because it's a piece of paper that you print off. I don't have time to go to my computer, right? Who has time to go to your computer and update this? So you'd print it off. And if you're anything like me, if you fold that paper up, then now it's trash because you're not gonna, it drove, it's like scribbling it all out and trying to make sense of it. To me, I need that nice, clean, crisp, place I can go. I'm an emerald. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's extremely organized. It needs to be, everything has its place. Okay? So I can't fold that paper up and write on it and fold it again. So I had to create my own system. So you do need to pull what you want to put in those pockets of time from your business activity trackers. But what you want to do is find the system that works for you. So for me, tracking from my phone became my best friend. This is my Reminders app in my iPhone. There's a Tasks um, app as well that you can use in the Android. And you simply put, you take your business activity tracker and you put it into your phone. And then you put next to it how many of each you want to do that day. Then from there, I would only focus on that top one. So if I'm doing outgoing messages and I'm at work and I have a 15 minute break, I'm doing my outgoing messages and I'm checking them off as I go. And I can put their name in it for the invites, for whatever it is. I can keep track of it in my phone and I'm not nervous that I need to put it on a piece of paper, make sure when I get home to say hi to everyone I need to say hi to and then get to the computer, open it, and it just simplified everything for me. So you would put in here what your goal is next to it. Now these numbers are higher because my goals are higher now, but this is just an example of how I would track from my phone. So then the next question is, well, how do you get the people that you're tracking, right? How do you know who you're reaching out to? You guys have heard about this already a little bit earlier. Um, you're working from a list, your Mac Daddy list, right? So you're working from this list and you're basically putting all the people you know on this list and then reaching out to them in order. Now it's great and as a work from home mom now, I use this system to a T and it's awesome, but working out of my house full time, I couldn't work from my list because I didn't have time to go on the computer, right? It's all this cycle, it all comes down to time. So maximizing your time, you have to figure something else out. <coughs> so what I did was I built my list. Instead of working from it, I built my list as I went. And I did this by using quality and value adding posts. So I would work with the people that commented and liked for the day, and I would add them into my tracking system on my phone, and then when I was able to get to my computer once every two weeks to update my Mac Daddy list, I had everything ready and I was building my list then. So then when I finally could work from my list, it was ready for me. So what is a quality post? Now a quality post is not a cheerleader post. So it's not a post where you're saying, I just did my workout, I'm feeling good, I, you know, here's my muscles for Flex Friday, who's joining me in my next group? People are not going to connect with that. You're not a, yes, that's great to pep people up and show what you're doing, but that's not going to give you the quality activity that you're looking for. What you need to do is share that you're human, share what makes you different not the same as every other coach, showcase what makes you different, and show that you're valuable, the information you have is valuable, and that you are a leader. These are example posts, example general posts. This is Christina's favorite on the right. Yeah. Um, and these are not about the business at all. These are just quality posts that I wrote that shown, showed a vulnerable side of myself. So this one was about being a blended family. I have two stepsons. And you know, it just shared that fear of ever, of them ever feeling like my son and my stepsons were really full siblings. I always had that fear, and I shared that. And 
this had a lot of activity. And then all those people that liked and commented, I was able to reach out to them, talk to them. I'm not thinking about inviting them. I have no intentions of that, but I'm building a relationship that's on something that's very vulnerable for both of us. So they feel connected to me on a different level. This other picture is one about me becoming a morning person. And if anyone follows me, you know that I'm still not. And um, it's basically saying like, I got up this morning and I hated it. And these are the thoughts that went through my head and I ate a big cookie and I don't care because this is what happened. And then I had a ton of activity on this post and I could just reach out and say, hey, why are you becoming a morning person too? What are we doing to ourselves? Like, why are we insane trying to do this? What, are, what is your goal with becoming a morning person? What are you try, trying to achieve? And it just gives me that relationship with them. These are two other um, examples of quality posts that have a little bit more to do with the business. So the other were non-business. This has to do with the business. On the right side, where it says you can't out-train your treats, this is just a quality post about something that has to do with what I would teach in an accountability group. So it shows the people that are following me that I can add value to their lives and teach them something, and it's showing them that on my personal page so that when I make that accountability group one-on-one -on -one invite or something, then they're gonna be more apt to wanna hear what I have to say and what it's about because they see that I already share quality posts about it on my page. The other one is a direct um, opportunity corner asking people or sharing some results Sharing a little bit of vulnerability, once again, I'm very out there with everything, I don't hold back. So sharing about myself and my journey, and then putting in there um, that opportunity that they could join me in my next accountability group. So now that you've seen those, you're wondering how you reach out to them. Okay, they like and comment, but how do I reach out? It's very simple, you don't need to overcomplicate it. In the bottom, it's just me reaching out to someone that's saying that I just explained it, asking what are you becoming a morning person for? I'm just reaching out to all those people that liked it. And I'm just asking them, you know, thanking them for liking my post or I saw your like. What is your goal? What is your journey? On the top one, that is an example of how I would reach out to someone that commented or liked on a post that was directly about an accountability group. So what I like to call this is a compliment or a question sandwich. So I start very um, just personal. I thank them for liking it. I, you know, I said those are tough to post. I appreciate it. I ask in the middle, I ask, I put that invite right out there. I'm to the point. I do not say let me know because they won't let you know ever. You'll stalk them and feel crazy. <laughs> so you need to just put it out there. People like that. People like that you're bold enough to say, do you want more information? And leave it at that without saying let me know because let me know it's flimsy, right? It doesn't work. So you need to just put it out there and then end it with something personal. So now getting into breaking down your um, business activity tracker. So your first thing on the list is your outgoing messages. Your outgoing messages is strictly an opportunity to connect with people. I know Christina talked about form or someone mentioned form earlier. So it's family, occupation, recreation, message. When we're a new coach, and especially when we're working in full time and we're jumping in to get to those messages, we wanna rush and get to that message. And we're like, how can I find this invite? You know, how can I get, how can I put this out there? Did they give me enough information yet? When you're doing outgoing messages, I want you to retrain your brain to think that you're connecting with people. And that's it. Do the first three, and the message will come if it's okay. Your goal here in outgoing messages is to warm your market up to you. It's to make you likable. It's to make you relatable. So your outgoing messages that you should be doing every single day are only to get people to connect with you, and that's it. And when you leave that conversation and they realize that you never asked them to join your group, that you really just asked them how they were and connected with them about a dancing hippo on their page, <laughs> then that's really what one says here, um, then they're gonna be like, oh, she's not so bad. And they're gonna start following you more. Adding to your network is the next one. So there's a few really quick and easy ways to add to your network. The first one is doing challenger spotlights. So you tag them with their permission, share their, inf their you know, thing you want to really congratulate them about with their permission and you put this on your page. What happens is their friends see you lifting them up and congratulating them on something that they've achieved, and they start commenting on this thread, and you start having quality conversations with their friends. 
and now you can add them to your network and maybe they're all gonna wanna join. It's almost like a referral, but you asked for it over them referring to you. So that's one way you can add to your network. The other way is to be a part of groups. So in this bottom one, I'm a part of <clears throat> some breastfeeding groups. <clears throat> and basically in there, I am in there, I will never talk about Beachbody. I never go in and ask people about anything to do with the business. I am really just a participant in that group. And then I create relationships by asking real questions or answering their questions and building those relationships. And when I add them to my Facebook page, now I'm inviting them into my home where they can get to know about me without, I don't need to invite them right away. If our conversation keeps going, that's great, but you're just inviting them in to learn about you. And then the last way is through people you know, or people you may know. Facebook does this for you. I will sometimes add this way, and I'll just look for people that I have five or more mutual friends with that I feel like it's a pretty good chance that I'm going to get them to um, accept, and then I'll add them that way. Inviting to a group. So this is our scary one, right? Um, these are two examples of how I would invite to a group. I'm not going to read them. They will be in the page for you to see, but they're basically the same thing I just said by that question or compliment sandwich. So I'm starting by reaching out to them, asking them about their family, asking how they're doing. I'm remembering things they've told me in the past. I'm remembering if they told me they went on a vacation and I'm asking about it. Then I'm asking to the point, in the middle, I thought of you, ask your question, invite, and end with something personal again. It's great to have at least one or two questions in there because then they're going to answer you. You have a better chance. If you sound like your main purpose is to talk to them and your main purpose is not to just send that invite. Call to actions are another way that you can invite. So this is, this was from a while ago and this one I just put up and I said right in the beginning to like, comment, or message me to reserve your spot and I was going to be hosting a five day um, sneak peek group. So I was just very vulnerable in this. I put this on there and then anyone that likes or comments or messages, those people I can send that direct invite to, just like I showed you earlier. Hey, how are you doing? Thank you for liking my post. That was a tough one to post. I really appreciate it. Are you interested in the information? Can I send you any information? You know, or were you just giving me a pat on the back? I can't wait to catch up with you. Your hair looks great. Whatever, I'm a hairstylist, or I was, so that's where my mind goes, but whatever connection goes for you. Inviting to the business prompted from a post. So there are two examples prompted from the post I just would have posted. So here are some you can take a picture of. Once again, they'll be in the um, Coach Camp event as well. So like I said, it's just that sandwiching of it so that you feel very approachable to them and they're not intimidated and they're not scared to tell you no. They're actually like, no, but thank you. And they appreciate that you ask, even though their answer is no. The genuine reach is those, that's those people that you know this business is perfect for and you've been waiting for the opportunity to invite them and it just hasn't come up and you wanna go up to them and just say, corner them like they cornered Mariella and be like, this is for you, hello, you know, but you don't know how to say it because once again, you don't wanna be pushy, you don't wanna be uncomfortable. So it's catching up with them, telling them that you, have you ever considered doing this? This is why X, Y, and Z, you're great at you know motivating people, you have a great story, you, people already look to you as a leader because of this and asking for asking them if they want more information. The last way that I look for invites is in green light moments. So green light moments are those moments in your accountability groups where people are loving Shakeology. They're getting results from Hammer and Chisel. They are loving the accountability groups. They're telling you, thank you for in inviting me. Those are your moments to send them a personal message right away, not a comment, a personal message and say to them, I am so excited that you're loving this. I've actually been wondering, you already are doing the steps of a coach. Have you ever considered doing it? You'd be great at it, you know, and then ending with, I'm huge on ending with a question that's not related to Beachbody or the business. So then that is a way that you can just give, put out those invites very casually and comfortably. There's other examples there. Um, that once again I'll post in the page. But the main thing is, is to not be scared because you have an amazing offer for people. Why would you, it's silly because I can't say why would you be scared because I'm scared sometimes too. 
but we have something to offer people that not a lot of people do. And why would we be scared to share that when all it can do for them is better their lives in more, way than, more ways than one? And if you come from a really genuine place and you share that and you tell them that's your intention, there's no way they can ever be mad at you. There's no way that they can ever think that you're pushy or you're a salesman, right? They just know that you care and you're just speaking to them from the heart. So the other way that I track, and I got this from Tabitha Sampson, so thank you, Tabitha. Um, but she taught me this actually a few months ago, and she printed off the gopher no sheets that Allison created, and we can put those in the page, and there's 12 of them, so all the way from January to December. And what I'll do is I'll write my invites on these. The people that say yes, I circle. The people that say no, I put an N. But I invite all those people, and I write down anyone I invite. And then the people that I don't think are going to, like maybe they're on the edge and they're gonna have a baby, so in a couple months, I'm gonna to wanna to reach out to them. I can flip forward to March or June and put their name in that first box. So when that month comes and I go to that month, I already know I have one invite from a prospect before that I can send that to. Now, Christine's way that she showed you earlier, that's amazing. And being a work from home mom, I can use that. But being a full-time working mom outside of the house, I don't have time to do all that on the computer, so this is just the system that worked for me. Um, the fortune is in the follow-up, so this is your last part. You guys need to follow up. If you say you're gonna do it, you have to do it, and you have to ask for it. You can't just send them the video and say, I'm going to check in, or I'll, let me know what you think, right? Let me know is like, <coughs> no. Get those words away from you forever. You can't say them. You have to say, I'm gonna grab that video now. I'll, if I follow up with you by tomorrow evening, will you have watched it by then? That gives them the opportunity to say, you know what, I'm super busy, I'm, I'll watch it by Tuesday. And you can say, great, I'm gonna send you a message or I'm gonna call you, which do you prefer, a phone call or a text or a message, ask what they prefer, and then follow up with them, tell them when you're gonna follow up. Wednesday morning, I'll be getting a hold of you. So then that sense of urgency is there because it's not to them. They don't know what you're, what you're offering yet. They're not in a rush to see what you have to say. You know what it is and you're excited, but they don't unless you place that in them. So maximizing your time to allow success for the work from home parent. Now, if you noticed, the struggles you may be experiencing here are very similar to the struggles you were experiencing when you were a work from, or a full-time working coach outside the home. You're, instead of finding time, having a hard time finding time, you're having a hard time carving out the time because now you feel guilty where you felt guilty before. You feel guilty saying to your husband, tonight instead of watching a movie, I have to work for an hour. And while he's watching a movie, you're working. Maybe I'll just work and watch the movie at the same time, right? Not gonna happen. But that guilt and everything there is still really hard. That's why I said in the beginning, maximizing your time to allow success, allow is the key word there. Because allow, you're gonna allow yourself to go forward and succeed, you're, or you're gonna allow yourself to fail, whether you're working full time or whether you're not. So that was a big uh, reality check for me when I finally um, was working from home. I was like, I'm gonna have all this time to one-on-one -on -one calls with my coaches. This is gonna be awesome, I'm totally present. And I was like, Christina, what am I doing? I had to learn it all over again. But it does, I'm not sharing that with you to scare you. I'm sharing that with you to tell you that no matter what your situation is, you have the same potential as Christina, Christine, Allison, Stacy, Amanda, myself. You have that same potential. It's just making it work and carving out the time. So I have just two minutes, I'm wrapping this up. So working from a list now is very similar to what I said before where I built my list. Now I can work from that list. On a Mac, you can split your screen, so I do that, and I work and I do 10 outgoing messages a day. So I'm able to look and just go right down my 10, put that I connected with them, the date that I connected with them, and I go to their page and I look at their friends, I look at their posts for the last week, I look at their cover photo, I find anything on their page that I can connect with, which is why I sent a dancing hippo message. It's weird, right? But the woman loved it, it was fine. But you have to find something to connect with. You can't just always just say, hey, I thought of you, how are you? Because some people are going to be like, why are you thinking of me? Delete. <laughs> this is creepy. Right? So you need to give them, you need to connect with them on something. 
And the other thing that is different now that I work from home is you have to give yourself a power day. A power day is four to six hours distraction free. And yes, you absolutely need this. Whether you're getting up in the morning and going to Starbucks for three hours before your family wakes up, whatever it is, you absolutely need this time. And in that time, you're going to take yourself to the next level. You're gonna focus on your one-on-one -on -one calls, you're gonna stay connected with your team, create videos, build your uh, platform, create your systems, but you need this because otherwise, your head, you're gonna be spinning and you won't be intentional with your time, which is what we talked about in the beginning. These will be available to you to see how I stay connected with my team. Um, these are just examples. I have a call log. You don't see any available spots there now, but normally I fill in when those spots are and they're able to sign up for a call and we can have that. But I don't have to do that very often anymore because I have this stay connected sheet where each coach has their name in and then they check the day that works best for them to connect with me and they can do it at any time that day. Message me, text me, email me, leave me a voicemail, and by the end of the day, I'll see, I will have gotten back to them. If they do it in the morning, they know I'm not gonna respond right away, but I can hear from them how they're doing it on a business level, a personal level, and sometimes they just say hi. Hi, I have nothing to share, life's great, awesome. Well, I, I'm glad to get that message too. You know, So these are just ways to stay connected to help you with your time. So the main thing to remember is it doesn't always go as planned, and you can see that. Um, these are books, they're also going to be posted so you don't need to write all these down, you can take a picture. These changed a lot for me in my business. They gave me a flexible mindset, but a determined mindset. So I knew that no matter what, I was still going to get what I needed done. And this taught me, these books specifically taught me a lot about um, just failing forward and figuring it out no matter what. So it all comes down to exactly what I said. You guys all have 24 hours in a day. You all have the same exact potential opportunity in your hand that I had when I started, that all of these people had when they started. Nothing, if you just started on Facebook three weeks ago, right, Audrey, is it, right? Three weeks and she already hit Emerald and she's doing great because she's not using that as an excuse where some of us will. The biggest thing is to find your fear Build yourself up with personal development in that area. That's where your personal development book comes from. What's my weakest link? I need to build that up. And then when you build that up, what's your next weakest link? Build that up. And just keep maximizing your time and working towards success and what you want. And remember to keep your why with you at all times. That's it. Woo!